What an honor to be here this afternoon. Uh, Pastor Luke, thank you so much for the privilege and the honor to come and stand before great men and great women, great women of God. You know, we have women uh, mixed now. So, thank you so much, sir. I really appreciate you. And the Lord will continue to increase his work in your hand in the name of Jesus. Men on fire is going places in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Pastor Fabian, thank you so much for the opening. Now, I don't even know what to minister, what to teach again. Because you've nearly said everything. You know, uh, Pastor Minister Gary, thank you so much. Are you forged or are you a forgery? And I, I'm sure you agree with him as much as I agree with him that there are so many people that are forgery out there. Hallelujah. You know, a lot of people are not tested yet. And I tell people, don't listen to people that are not yet tested. A lot of people are so untested and they're out there. Thank you so much, sir, for that word, for laying the foundation of our love, that everything we do has to come from love, the love of God. Praise God. Thank you. And I love what you said as well when, when he mentioned that spiritual maturity comes through trials. It comes through challenges. It comes through fire. It doesn't come through gifting or talent. You know, because when God matured you through test trials and fire, you will know that indeed because it's going to change your character. You have what we call Christ-like character. Amen. Amen. Hallelujah. Let's just bow our head as we pray. Father, we just want to thank you. Thank you for your servant, Pastor Luke. Thank you. Thank God for what you're doing in his life. Thank him for him gathering every one of us here. Father, we thank you for this moment. Even as we go into your perfect law of liberty, we ask that you give us meekness to receive your engrafted word that is able to save our soul. In the name of Jesus, I commit myself unto you. Father, I pray that you make my lips like the pen of the ready writer, that the heart of your people will receive what you have put in my heart, and your word will edify them, it will instruct them, it will reprove them, and your word will correct them, your word will encourage them, and your word will bring transformation in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we have prayed. Amen. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Okay. The Bible says the glory of the latter house shall be greater than the former. Isn't it? This year shall be greater than last year when we had men on fire right in Bermia. Amen. Amen. So, the theme for this men's conference is forged. It, wow. I love the way Pastor Fabian did the introduction, the laying of foundation. You know, when you are building a house, the foundation is the most important part of a building. And that is the one nobody sees. It's invisible. Nobody sees foundation. And the deeper the foundation, the stronger the house. The foundation you're going to lay for a house of two-story building will be different from a house of 20-story buildings. So, what that says to me that the deeper you go in God, the deeper your foundation in God, the stronger you become. So I'll thank you, sir, because in the feed you are in automobile, you've actually talked about forge everything, metal, steel. I was like, wow, I'm gonna do this again. Amen. Amen. So I'll be speaking quickly on something I've titled The Necessity of Process. The necessity of process. In other words, what happens when God don't put off the fire? Because that, that's what happened to those guys, isn't it? They were in the fire, but God refused to put out the fire. So you are going through a challenge, a challenge in your life, and God did not take away the challenge. What happened to you? 
Hopefully, in between these, I will share part of my story. Or let me probably let me just quickly do that. Hallelujah. I came into UK going to 15, 16 years now. And the first six years or five years was okay. I didn't have any issue. But 2009, I had an issue with the immigration. And this is a journey that took me 10 years. For 10 years, I was having an issue with the home office. Probably some of you have never had that experience. You were born here. Praise God. Hallelujah. You might not understand. I was in that wilderness for 10 years until June this year. Now, so many things happened in between that time. So many things. About six times, I made an attempt to go back to Nigeria. There's no point. I've got my qualification before I came here. I can easily go back and just do something. About three times, I have a thought of committing suicide. Why? Because I was not allowed to work for 10 years. And I'm not ready to do shortcuts. Was there no temptation? Yes, there was temptation nearly every day. Pastor in the church, I found that I, we had to, I had to close the church down two years ago. Why? Because there were wrong people in the church. Thank God you're a pastor. You know, when you have a wrong set of people around you, Why did God allow the 10 years? Why do I have to go to 10 years? We went to court. Don't forget, I'm married. I'm the husband of one wife. And I have three lovely children. So, imagine. We went to court closely about probably four, five, six times in that 10 years. You know, the judge was supporting the home office. It got, to, it got to a stage. Home office said to me that I shouldn't write to them again. I need to go and make a fresh application. You know, when you're about to make application, you know how much it's going to cost you. So, and I feel like, no. Now, you need to understand that Whatever you're going through today, God is right there with you. But you must understand the purpose. What is in the mind of God? Why he had to take you through that thing? The Bible says, our light affliction is for a moment. So I want to talk to us. I'm going to teach my first book was meant to be launched next week, Saturday, or two weeks' time. But due to some delay, and the title of the, of the book is The Journey to Destiny. The Promise, Process, and Performance. So I'm going to be teaching from my book today with Bible references. Amen. So I'm talking on the necessity of process. Hallelujah. When I look at the word forged, which is the theme of this meeting, forge means to form by eating and hammering, to beat into shape. And I'm sure this speaker must have been forged to get to this shape. Isn't it? The Bible says we are a clay. God is the potter. Do you know what potter does to clay? The potter mold the clay to what is in the mind of the potter. So God mold you. God is the potter. You are the clay. So he will use anything to mold you, 
to what he has in mind concerning you. Hallelujah. So, the word forge means to form or make, especially by concentrated effort. He also said, a special fireplace or a furnace where those boys are, isn't it? In which metal is heated before shaping. Thank you, sir. I will continue thanking you because you really laid the foundation. You know, if you want to put a metal in a particular shape, you have to forge that metal, isn't it? Please correct me. I'm not into automobile. <laughs> so that it will go through that fire so that that metal can come out into the shape you have. Okay. Now, let's just understand. Let me give you a picture in that scripture. A few things I want us to learn about those three boys in the burning fire. In the burning fire. Number one, they were courageous and they were faithful witnesses. Amen. Men, God is looking for courageous men. God is looking for faithful men that will be faithful even at the point of death. Men that will not bow down to temptation. Men that will not bow down to the storms of life. Men that will not sell their soul to the devil. Men that will not sell their bat right. We are living in a dispensation where we are going to, we are doing what we are not meant to do. All because we want to be relevant. There's something they call gigolo. You've had it before. Male prostitution. The men do male just for because they want to survive. Probably they lack money or they need the money. So they go to that lens. But God is said he is looking for faithful men. God is looking for courageous men. He said, be of good courage. Do not be dismayed. He's looking for men that will stand in the midst of trials. So that's the first point. In that number two point, they believe in God with a childlike faith. God is looking for men that will believe in him with a childlike faith. If you take a child like this and you just throw a child up, the child will believe and have faith that you will carry, you will receive it when it's coming down. Isn't it, sir? You throw a child up, boom, they will not be scared. They believe that you are there. So God is looking for men that will have childlike faith in him. These three guys have childlike faith. They say, if God did not deliver us, we will still not bow down to it. So God is looking for such men. The necessity of process. They were cast into the burning furnace to demonstrate their faithfulness and be witness to the world. The Bible says, for the creation awaits the endless manifestation of the sons of God. Amen. If God did not take you through a process, there can be manifestation. Amen. So you need to allow God to take you that, through that process, through that fire. Why? So that you can become witness to the world. Hallelujah. Number four. They saw the Lord inside the burning furnace. Do you see God in your challenges? Because if you don't see God in that fire you're going through at the moment, it becomes a problem. There is no anchor for you. So you need to see God. You need to tell God to open your eyes to see him. We live in the part, in the part of the world where anything goes in this country. You can't even talk about your faith at workplace. For those of you working in the healthcare system, especially in the hospital, somebody's about to die. And you know that when you speak the word of life to them, there's probability they come back to life. But because of the society we live in, you can't even speak the word of life to them. 
So, God is asking us this morning, saying to us, do we see God the way these guys see God in the furnace? They were made free. Hallelujah. The price of your life has been, paid, has, been, has been paid. Amen. Jesus has paid the price. He said it is finished. You are free indeed. He said whoever the son of man set free is free indeed. You are free already. So you need to enjoy that freedom in Christ. No matter what the situation might be today, understand that you are already free. I have, I have had people saying, I remember those years. I said, God have mercy. A pastor said to me and my wife, he said, because we are in one particular scene. That's why our papers are delayed. You know, imagine somebody call your pastor that you're under, saying that to you because you are living in sin. See, let me tell you something. There is no pain-free Christian. We are not immune from pain as Christian. If Jesus was not immune from pain, you can never be immune from pain. Jesus could have come to this earth straight away without even going through the cross and reconcile us back to God straight away. But because he has to live an example life for you and I, he had to go through that process died on the cross, resurrected and ascended, and sit down on the right hand of God. Why? So that you can know that you can never live a pain-free life as Christian. So don't let anybody bamboozle you that you, you, you are a sinner. That's why God now answers your prayer. I tell people when it comes to healing, God does three things. When it comes, Number one is that God can heal you supernaturally, straight away. Pam, you have cancer. Go to God. You pray. God heal you. Fine. Praise God. Other one is that God can leave you in that cancer and give you the grace to, to survive that cancer for 20, 30 years. He said, my grace is sufficient for you. And you, you have that cancer and you are still living a normal life and you will be there for 30, 40 years. Amen. Amen. And the third thing God can do for you, he can say, okay, the suffering is too much. Come home. And he take you home straight away. Yep. So, the Bible says God does as his pleases. Amen. Now, number five. I've not even started my message, Joe, please. It's just the foundation. Amen. Hallelujah. Number six. You may be going through a fire, but God will bring you out on the other side better than you are. Those guys, they went through that fire, isn't it? When they came out on the other side, they were better than how they came into the fire. Because before they went into the fire, they were nobody. Isn't it? While they were in the fire, they were nobody. By the time the Son of Man showed in that furnace and they came out of the furnace, they become somebody. They become somebody. So, you're going to fire. It's for God to bring you be, make you become a better person on the other side. And the, that the whole world will look at you and say, it can only be God. Nebuchadnezzar bowed down to those four boys. But before they went through the fire, there were nobody to him. So you're going through the fire now. You might be nobody. But when you come out on the other side, God will make you somebody. And everybody will come to your light. And give glory to God. Amen. Number seven, quickly. And they receive a great reward from God. Look at that verse 30. They receive a great reward from God. God will reward you for his faithfulness. Amen. God is a God that rewards those that diligently seek him. He's a faithful God. Hallelujah. Okay. Faith is tested through trials, not produced by trials. Faith is tested through trials. 
God will test your faith through those things you are going through, through those trials. He will test how faithful you are to him. Trials reveal what faith we do have. Not because God does not know how much faith we have, but to make our faith evident to ourselves and those around us. God knows the amount of faith you have. But because of other people, he wants you to be an evidence to them. The three boys became an evidence of their faith in God when they came out from that furnace. Amen. Hallelujah. God can only deliver to you by you, by having faith in him. Because faith is what will carry you into the fulfillment of God's promises for your life. Faith is an enablement that enables you to believe in hope against all hope. Romans 4, 17, to 8, 17 and 18, quickly. The Bible says, as it is written, I have made thee a father of nations, speaking about Abraham. Before him, whom he believed, even God, whom quickened the dead, and called those things which be as though they were. Who against all hope believed in hope that he might become the father of many nations. According to that which was spoken, so shall the seed be. Amen. So you need to understand that faith is something that you need to enable you to believe in hope against all hope. In your post period, your faith is very important. And if we are willing to stay true to God and his word, regardless of the consequences, God has promised us two things. Number one, Isaiah 43 verse 2. He said, when thou pass through the waters, he said, I will be there. I will be with thee. And through the rivers, they shall not overflow thee. See, no matter the situation, no matter the challenges you are going through now, no matter who is prosecuting you, God says that they will not overcome you. They will not overpower you. He said, he is there with you. Those guys is an example. Those three boys, Medua Shekhar and Abednego, in the fire, God fulfilled his word in their life. You see, the word of God must become a reality. It must become life to you. If the word of God has not become life to you, then you have not started your journey with God. Because the word of God is not intangible. It's, it's something you can see. You, you should be able to see it happening to you. He said, I will be with you. And he was with those guys in the fire. Isaiah 43 verse 2 is coming to play in the life of those guys. Hallelujah. The other thing God promised is 1 Corinthians 10, 13. He said, there had no temptation taking you, but such is common to man. But God is faithful. Who will not suffer you to tempt it above that ye are able, but will with the temptation also make a way to escape that ye may be able to bear it. No matter what you're going through today, the ability to go through it is already in you. The strength to go in through is already in you. You are trusting God for the fruit of the womb for 13 years. The strength God has already put it before it even happened. So he said, we make a way of escape for you. Whatever temptation it is, whatever thing you think the enemy is doing, whatever thing you are trusting God, you are waiting on God for today, God says, it is not, it's not uncommon to man. But you will make a way of escape. There's, a, there's something, and there's a purpose, there's an intention in the mind of God, which I'm coming there. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Now, okay, we're going deeply now, isn't it? God will never bless you with anything you don't have capacity to manage. Your process time is a God that God is building capacity in you to manage the blessing. Have you not noticed when people are trusting God for something and that thing came, 
they leave God, they get destroyed. There is nothing like microwave success. Don't let anybody deceive you. There's nothing like overnight success. God is not a magician. He's a miracle working God. But he will take you through the process. He will take you through the process Amen. before you see the performance of his promise. He gave Joseph a dream that Joseph will become the prime minister. People will bow down to him. But if Joseph had knew that God will take him through that process, he will say to God, God, hold on your dream. Imagine. Somebody lie against you that you raped them. You will have given up. Some of us will have given up. I love something about God. He will show you the end of your life. Yeah. But he will never tell you how you will get there. Get there. <laughs> yeah. He will give you a picture. You're going to be prime minister of United Kingdom in 20 years time. But be, before becoming that prime minister, probably they will lock you up in the prison. Probably somebody will like lie against you. But why would God do that? Because He wants you to continue to depend on Him. He wants you to con continue coming back to Him. Lord, what next? What next? What next? So please, I'm begging you. Allow God to process you. Allow God to take you to what He wants to take you to. Why? Because God is preparing you for what he has already prepared for you. He said in Exodus, he said, I will bring you to a place where I have already prepared for you. He said, there is a place God has prepared for you already. Before the world, before the foundation of this world. But God out to now start preparing you for what he has already prepared for you. Hence the reason why you have to go through that process. Hence why you have to go through that fire. Those trials. Those challenges of life. Either immigration issue, either childbearing, either you're waiting on God for the fruit of the womb, you're trusting God for a life partner, financial difficulties, whatever it is, God is preparing you, using all that to prepare you for what he has already prepared for you. There is a glorious future God has prepared for you, but you will not get there overnight. Hallelujah. Now, I said God will never bless you with anything you don't have the capacity to manage. That is why he will have to process you first. He will have to take through those fire. He will have to forge you. You will not become a gold that will go through a refining process. He will refine you, remove the impurities. He will remove self-sufficiency from you. Self-centeredness. He will remove everything from you. The Bible says, if thou faint in the days of adversity, it said your strength is small. Now, the question is, whether you like it or not, the days of adversity will come in your life. Become the general overseer of 25,000 churches in the old world. Your days of adversity will come. The old world might not know. But you and God will know. Your members, your pastors might not know. But you and God will know. He said, if you faint in the days of adversity, your strength is small. What that says to me is that your days of adversity will come. It is a matter of when. You don't know. But if you faint on that day, your strength is small. And the only way your strength will not be small before that day is the word of God. That's going to build you up. Hallelujah. Now, God uses the wilderness. Like I said, I'm teaching from my book. So, God uses the wilderness and trials to shape you so that the promised land won't break you. In the little time I've spent or in my little years of my relationship with God, I think I received Christ into my life July 10, 1996. And it has been a journey. There is a promised land for every one of us. God has a promised land for you. But in order for that promised land not to break you, God has to take you that process. 
if, if somebody could tell me that 10 years of my life, I'll be waiting on my immigration status to be legalized, I will argue with that person for 10 years. I was not allowed to work for 10 years. There's no income that's coming into the family. The government was supporting us, but that is not the essence of life. It's not about my dignity. But God had to use that for a purpose in my life. Amen. Now, life with God is not immune from difficulties, challenges, but peace in difficulties. Now, let's go into the process now. Process is very painful, but very necessary and essential for your good. And in our relationship with God, therefore, please allow God to process you. Allow God to forge you as a man. Sir, it is not a sign of weakness if you are going through challenges. Hallelujah. It doesn't make you less of a man if you are going to try us, sir. Because we have been conditioned as men that we have to be strong. Men also cry, sir. Men also cry. If you need to cry, cry, cry it out. It doesn't make you a weak man. Don't let anybody deceive you. Because if you don't cry to God, pride sets in. It means that you don't want God to intervene. Let your wife see you crying, man. Let her see your vulnerability. Because most men, we don't want our wife to see us crying. Be vulnerable to your wife because she is your wife. Be vulnerable to her. Why? You are human. At, let your wife see you at your lowest. You gain more respect. I'm telling you. But if you are doing this macho man, you are flexing your muscle. You will die alone. And you will die inside it. Praise God. You will die there. You will run mad. You will be sectioned in the mental hospital. I run a men's ministry and I tell men, it is not a sin. You see, let me tell you a few things about men. You see, thank God for both of you. By the time we have break now, if you have 10 minutes discussion, you will have told that 10, 25 or 30 percent of your life, you will have told that. But men, if we meet ourselves, we don't say anything to ourselves. Do you know why? I don't want him to see me less of a man or a weak man. So I bustle it up. Ego. Meanwhile, I'm suffering. And it's God's solution. May God deliver you as men. Because of ego. So we need to deal with our ego. When women meet each other, how are you God bless you? They will tell themselves about their marriage, the way the husband sleep with them, the way the husband is not doing the sex very well. Women will say everything to each other. But let men meet themselves. They will never share their intimate their secrets with them. I tell people, never call anybody your best friend. Because if your best friend cannot see your nakedness, they are not your friend. Your friend is someone that will be able to see your nakedness and wrap you up and not tell anybody that I've seen your nakedness. That's your friend. So most men don't trust, men don't trust each other. Because why? I don't want you to see me as a weak man. He's not a man, he's a boy. There are places that you need to man up. Let's bring balance. But there are places that man don't man up anything. Don't try and don't cajole us. Just open up. Let's talk. Bro, I'm having this issue. I need five pounds. What is there? The worst, he will say no. That is the worst, he will, he will say to you. And if you keep on telling any, everybody that you ask for five pounds, that is his own cup of tea. That is his own problem. Not your problem. So that reveal the kind of person he is. Then you will know your boundaries. So, man, 
process is very, very difficult and painful, but it's necessary for your good, for your maturity with God. So when he said spiritual maturity comes to fire, and I said, wow, that's, that's the word. He has finished the message today. Spiritual maturity comes to fire. It comes to trials. It comes to challenge it. You've not gone through things in life. You're coming. No, 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 no. Come on. No. Tell us what you went through. How you came out of it. Then you, you become a voice. Hallelujah. Amen. Now, let's dig in again. The process is greater than the destination. The wisdom of the process delivers you from the foolishness that comes with arrival. Let me explain this to you so you can understand. And I will repeat it again. So you will understand it well. You see, when God answers some people's prayer, maybe probably they are trusting God for a change of job from 20,000 per annum to probably 45,000 per annum. If you are not careful, there will be foolishness in your life where you arrive at 45,000 per annum. Why? Because you will feel on top of the world. You will be pompous. Pride will set in. In fact, we will not see you in church again. God will not give you a job that will take you away from his presence. You are the one that makes that decision not to come again to the presence of God because you are now from 20,000 to 45,000 per annum with car allowance. Travel, travel all over the world. And you're, now your pastor does not have eloquence again. He does not know how to speak English anymore. This is the same pastor that prayed with you or that prayed for you. I don't pray for people. I pray with you. Amen? I join my faith with your faith. I'm not a prayer contractor. <laughs> it's true. Because some pastors are not subconsciously members have turned pastors to prayer contractor. The wife will not be able to enjoy him at all. He will be on fasting every day, seven days a week. Fasting on behalf of members. When the Bible says one we chase what? One thousand. And two we chase two thousand. You go and chase one thousand first. If you can't chase that one thousand, come to me. That will not join my faith with your faith. You will not chase one thousand. But you've not chasing one thousand at all. You are coming to me. Ah, no, 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 no. It doesn't work that way. Let's be practical with scripture. Amen. So it's a question of, I will join my faith with your faith, sir. And I will pray with you. I won't pray for you. Because I, I don't have power to pray for anybody. It is the Holy Ghost. It is the power of God that pray for people. It is the Holy Ghost that can pray for anybody. You can only pray with people. Let me pray for you. No, no, you are the Holy Ghost. You are not the Holy Ghost. He lives in you, praise God. But you are not the Holy Ghost. Because the Holy Ghost is the one that knows the mind of God concerning any situation. Now, this is what I'm saying. The process is greater than the destination. What God is taking you to is greater than where he's taking you to. It's not about where God is taking you to. It's about how you will get to that place. That's what matters to God. The things God wants to take out of your life. Those ego, pride, pomposity. Now, the wisdom of the process delivers you from the foolishness that comes with arrival. Because some foolishness will come from your arrival at your promised land. So if you don't allow wisdom to kick in, that foolishness will destroy you. Amen. Now, stay in your process, but never miss the wisdom daring. It is the security of your future. There is wisdom in your process that you need to take on board. Hallelujah. Let's move quickly because of our time. I think about 24, 25 minutes left. Amen. Now, we don't develop courage by being happy every day. Amen. Okay. I thought it's one hour. Good. Now, we develop it by surviving difficult times and challenging adversity. Okay. Let me jump. 
listen to this. Believe it or not, God's number one priority is not to make you happy, fulfilled, or have everything go your way. His primary agenda is for your life is to make you like his son. How? First Peter 2.21, quickly. The Bible says, for even year unto year we are called, because Christ has also suffered for us, leaving us what? An example. They, that ye should follow his steps. Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. This is the step he wants us to follow. Go to Hebrews 1 to 3. Remember, it says, that ye should follow whose step? Christ's step. What is that step? Hebrews 12, 1 to 3. The Bible says, Wherefore, seeing we are also encompassed about with so great cloud of witnesses, let us lay aside every weight and the sin which doeth easily beset us, and let us run with patience the race. That is set before us. Verse 2 is where I'm going to. He now said, looking unto Jesus. That is the step. That is the step. We should follow what? Who step? Jesus step. In Hebrews 12, 2, he said, looking unto Jesus. Who? The author and finisher of our faith. Who did what? For the joy that was set before him. Endured the trial. Endured the forging. Endured the challenges. Endured the the, the, the storms of life. Dispersing the shame. What shame? The shame nailing him on the cross. Spitting at him. Blaspheming against him. Persecuting him. And he sat down at the right hand of the throne of God. Amen. So we need to follow the steps of Christ. Praise God. God will build your character so you can thrive in your calling. Don't run from the trials. They are not deter, but they are a training ground. Thank you, sir. You mentioned the word training when he was speaking. It's a training ground for you. Your time of process is the God training you. He's training you. You are in a school. He's training you. Proverbs 17.3 The Bible says, The finding part is for silver. And the furnace for gold. But the Lord tried the art. Hallelujah. I love God. I love God. I will know where you love God when trials come. The word of God is a practical application to our life. I will know whether you, how much you love God when those trials come. When the enemy brings his ugly head, we will know whether you love God. Maybe you will bow down to the image or not. Loving God is not by mouth. It's by your actions. Actions. In the same way God, in the same way gold and silver are refined by fire, the Lord purifies your heart by test and trials of life. You see, God used test and tries to purify your hearts. Why? Because your heart is the main field. Your heart is the battleground. Your heart is the real thing. The heart of a man is desperate what? Who can do what? Who can know it? Your heart is where every issues of life flow. So God will use test and trial to test that your heart, my heart. If truly we love him. If truly we are genuinely and faithful to him. Amen. Amen. Now. Now. The waiting period between when God answers your prayers and when you receive it is where your Christian character development occurs. God built your character during your process. Your Christian character development occurs while you are, you are waiting on God. Character is not built in pleasure. No. Those three boys' character were built in the furnace, in the fire. Character is built in, in pains and in trial and doing the post that God is taking you to. Look at the life of Joseph. Joseph could have slept with the wife of Potiphar and became prime minister straight away. God build our character during our process. 
Amen. Now, I'm just going to say this probably I'll round up because of my time. To live, something must die. The Bible says, unless a grain fell to the ground, you cannot do what? So for you to live, you have to die. Something must die in you first to live. In order to give birth, a mother must endure the suffering of the birth process. Women, you know how it is. Before the resurrection was the pain of the cross. Before God promotes you and I, it takes us to trials. Fire, pain to purify our hearts, deepen our dependence on him, and impart spiritual wisdom. Amen. Even Jesus, our Lord and Savior, the Bible says he had to learn obedience to the things he suffered. Hebrews 5, 8 to 9. Because of time. He had to learn obedience to the things he suffered. God wants to teach you obedience in your forging time, in your process time. Now, let us quickly run this up. Hmm. Stay with the program he's preparing for you for what he has already prepared. Why? Because God is preparing you for what he has already prepared for you. Hence, why he needs to shape, forge you, mold you, purify you. And as I come to conclusion, the power of process. Number one, process is the period God empty you of yourself and so that he can fill you, refill you of him. Number two, process is more about you. God changing your focus to him. He wants to change your focus from you to him. It's more about you. He wants to change your focus from yourself to him. Number three, process is a way your trust in God is built and it allows you to trust God. And number four, process is a way you trust God even if he doesn't do anything for you. Remember those boys. You know what they said? He said, even God did not deliver us. We will still not bow down. Even if God did not give you those papers, we used to trust God. Even God did not give you the house, the mortgage, we used to trust God. Even if the child did not come, See, there is an appointed time, there is expected time. Expected time is your own timing. Appointed time is God's timing. So appointed time is far greater and better than expected time. It's good to plan. No? I teach people about goals, plan. But make sure your planning is in accordance with the purpose of God for your life. Amen. Job 13, 15. Though he slay me, yet I will trust in him. But we maintain my own ways before him. Are you maintaining your ways before God? Whatever you are trusting God for. Transformation comes through process. And the whole essence of the process is to make God your reliance and dependency. Amen. Process is what built in you the necessary character, virtue, and spiritual stamina. Please, I'm going to read this gently so you can understand it. Process is what built in you the necessary character, virtue, and spiritual stamina to sustain the blessing and the performance of the promise of God concerning you. So, process is where God built character in you, where He builds virtue in you, where you develop a spiritual stamina. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. And as we come to conclusion, God is faithful. God is the faithful God. And as a result, God is looking for faithful men. Faithful men that will stay through the process, that will stay through the forging, that will stay through the purification, through the molding period, through the shaping period. He's looking for men who are believers, like the three Hebrew boys. Men who is, he, will, he, he will protect them, like the way he protected those guys. Men that will be determined. Men that will be deemed. God is looking for them. Men that will be committed to the Lord. Men that will be fearless. Men that will be fearless. Men that they, they are privileged, that they will see themselves as privileged being used by God. And men that he wants to promote. God is ready to promote you. Will you be faithful to, the, to your process period? 
Will you be faithful to the podium? And as we round up, let's just stand up. Job 23, verse 10. Job 23, verse 10. This is what the Bible says. He said, For he know it, the way I take. When he had tried me, when he had purged me, when he had purified me, when he had shaped me, he said, I shall come forth as gold. May you come forth as gold. As the both boys, those three boys, came forth as gold. When God has tried them, they came forth as gold. May you come forth as gold in the name of Jesus. Please, God, be faithful to God. Let God possess you. See, let God possess you. You want to remove impurities from you. You want to, you, you want to, develop, you want to develop Christ-like characters. So, it's going to possess you. The necessity of process. Let's just close our eyes and ask God. In any way we have complained, we have moaned. But whatever thing we are going through, whatever those challenges may be, that we are not seeing God in it. Just speak to you to have mercy on you. That from this moment, you will not compare your life with anybody. You will allow him to forge you. The patience and the wisdom, the faith to go through that forging. May the Lord release upon us today. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Thank you so much and God bless you.